This course discusses the techniques of evaluating a company's internal situation, including its collection of resources and capabilities, its cost structure and customer value proposition, and its competitive strength. The internal environment includes elements within the organization's boundaries, such as employees, management, and organizational culture. The analytical spotlight will be trained on five questions. How well is the company's strategy working? What are the company's competitively important resources and capabilities? Are the company's cost structure and customer value proposition competitive? Is the company's competitively stronger or weaker than key rivals? And what strategic issues and problems merit front burner managerial attention? The answers to these five questions complete management's understanding of the company's overall situation and position the company for a good strategy situation fit. The reality is most organizations don't have a strategy that works. The two best indicators of how well an organization's strategy is working are one, whether the company is recording gains in financial strength and profitability, and two, whether the company's competitive strength and market standing are improving. Persistent shortfalls in meeting company performance targets and weak performance relative to rivals are reliable warning signs that a company suffers from poor strategy making, less than competent strategy execution, or both. Other indicators of how well a company's strategy is working include trends in the company's sales and earnings growth, the company's overall financial strength, the company's customer retention rate, the rate at which new customers are acquired, and changes in the company's image and reputation with customers. The stronger a company's current overall performance, the less likely the need for radical changes in strategy. A resource is a competitive asset that's owned or controlled by a company. And a capability is the capacity of a company to completely perform some internal activity. Capabilities are developed and enabled through the deployment of company resources. Long-term competitive advantage requires the ongoing development and expansion of resources and capabilities to pursue emerging market opportunities and defend against future threats to its market standing and profitability. Organizational capabilities are developed and enabled through the deployment of a company's resources or some combination of its resources. Some capabilities rely heavily on a company's intangible resources such as human assets and intellectual capital. What is most telling about a company's aggregation of resources and capabilities is how powerful they are in the marketplace. The competitive power of a resource or capability is measured by how many of the four tests for sustainable competitive advantage it can pass. The tests are often referred to as the VRIN tests for sustainable competitive advantage, an acronym for valuable, rare, imitatable, and non-substitutable. The first two tests determine whether the resource or capability may contribute to the competitive advantage. The last two determine the degree to which the competitive advantage potential can be sustained. Is the resource or capability competitively valuable? All companies possess a collection of resources and capabilities. Some have the potential to contribute to competitive advantage, while others do not. Is the resource or capability rare, or is it something that rivals lack? Resources and capabilities that are common among firms and widely available cannot be the source of competitive advantage. Is the resource or capability imitatable or hard to copy? The more difficult and the more expensive it is to imitate a company's resource or capability, the more likely that it can also provide a sustainable competitive advantage. And finally, is the resource or capability non-substitutable or is it vulnerable to the threat of substitution from different types of resources and capabilities? Resources that are competitively valuable, rare, and costly to imitate may lose much of their ability to offer competitive advantage if rivals possess equivalent substitute resources. If management determines that the company doesn't possess a resource that independently passes all four tests with high marks, it may have a bundle of resources that can pass all of the tests. Resources and capabilities must be continually strengthened and nurtured to sustain their competitive power, and at times, they may need to be broadened and deepened to allow the company to position itself to pursue emerging market opportunities. 
Organizational resources and capabilities that grow stale can impair competitiveness unless they're refreshed, modified, or even phased out and replaced in response to ongoing market changes and shifts in the company's strategy. In addition, disruptive environmental change may destroy values of key strategic assets, turning static resources and capabilities from diamonds to rust. Management's organizational building challenge has two elements, attending to ongoing recalibration of existing capabilities and resources, and two, casting a watchful eye for opportunities to develop totally new capabilities for delivering better customer value and outcompeting rivals. Companies that know the importance of recalibrating and upgrading resources and capabilities make it routine management functions to build new resource configurations and capabilities. A company requires a dynamically evolving portfolio of resources and capabilities in order to sustain its competitiveness and position itself to pursue future market opportunities. A dynamic capability is the ability to modify, deepen, or reconfigure the company's existing resources and capabilities in response to its changing environment or market opportunities. A value proposition is an innovation, service, or feature intended to make a company or product attractive to customers. Every company's business consists of a collection of activities undertaken in the course of designing, producing, marketing, delivering, and supporting its product or service. All of the various activities that a company performs internally combined to form a value chain, so-called because the underlying intent of a company's activities is to do things that ultimately create value for buyers. A company's value chain consists of two broad categories of activities that drive costs and create customer value. The primary activities that are the foremost in creating value for customers and the requisite support activities that facilitate and enhance the performance of the primary activities. Primary activities include supply chain management, which are the activities associated with purchasing inputs from suppliers. Operations, which are the activities associated with converting inputs into final product forms. Distribution, which are activities dealing with physically distributing the product to buyers. Sales and marketing, which are related to Salesforce efforts, advertising, and promotion. And finally, service, those activities associated with providing assistance to buyers. The requisite support activities include product development, activities relating to product research and development as well as human resource management, which is associated with the recruitment, hiring, training, development, and compensation of all types of personnel, and general administration, which are the activities relating to general management, accounting and finance, legal and regulatory affairs, and other overhead functions. Benchmarking entails comparing how different companies perform various value chain activities, how materials are purchased, how inventories are managed, how products are assembled, how customer orders are filled and shipped, and how maintenance is performed, and then making cross-company comparisons of the costs and effectiveness of these activities. Benchmarking is a potent tool for learning which companies are best at performing particular activities and using their techniques or best practices to improve the cost and effectiveness of a company's own internal activities. The tough part of benchmarking is not whether to do it, but rather how to gain access to information about other companies' practices and costs. However, a fairly reliable source of benchmarking information has emerged. The explosive interest of companies in benchmarking costs and identifying best practices has promoted consulting organizations and several councils and associations to gather benchmarking data. Having an independent group gather the information lessens the potential for unethical behavior on the part of company personnel in gathering their own data about competitors. A company's customer value proposition and cost competitiveness depend not only on internally performed activities, its own company value chain, but also the value chain activities of its suppliers and forward channel allies. Making this determination requires answers to two questions. How does the company rank relative to competitors on each of the important factors that determine market success? And, all things considered, does the company have a net competitive advantage or disadvantage versus major competitors? Competitive advantage is the leverage that a business has over its competitors. Competitive strength assessments provide useful conclusions about a company's competitive situation. 
The ratings show how a company compares against rivals, factor by factor or capability by capability, thus revealing where it's strongest and weakest. Moreover, the overall competitive strength scores indicate whether a company is at a net competitive advantage or disadvantage against each rival. Step 1 in doing a competitive strength assessment is to list the industry's key success factors and other telling measures of competitive strength or weakness. 6 to 10 measures usually suffice. Step 2 is to assign a weight to each measure of competitive strength based on its perceived importance of shaping competitive success. The sum of the weights for each measure must add up to 1. Step 3 is to calculate weighted strength ratings by scoring each competitor on each strength measure, using a 1 to 10 rating scale where 1 is very weak and 10 is very strong, and multiplying the assigned rating by the assigned weight. Step 4 is to sum the weighted strengths on each factor to get the overall measure of competitive strength for each company being rated. And finally, step 5 is to use the overall strength ratings to draw conclusions about the size and extent of the company's net competitive advantage or disadvantage and to take specific note of areas of strength and weakness. A company's competitive strength scores pinpoint its strengths and weaknesses against rivals and point to offense and defense strategies capable of producing first-rate results. Strategic issues are found by pinpointing the precise things that management needs to worry about and sets the agenda for deciding what actions to take next to improve the company's performance and business outlook. Managers need to zero in exactly on what strategic issues company managers need to address. This step involves drawing on the results of both industry and competitive analysis and the evaluations of the company's internal situation. The task here is to get a clear fix on exactly what industry and competitive challenges confront the company, which of the company's internal weaknesses need fixing, and what specific problems merit front burner attention by company managers. If the items on management's worry list are relatively minor, which suggests the company's strategy is mostly on track and reasonably well matched to the overall situation, company managers seldom need to go much further than fine tuning the present strategy. If, however, the issues and problems confronting the company are serious and indicate the present strategy is not well suited for the road ahead, the task of crafting a better strategy has to go on the top of management's action agenda. Compiling a management worry list of problems and issues creates an agenda for managerial strategy making.